Now I want to cover a little bit more on efficient development workflows and how to integrate our testing suite into the bigger CI CD pipeline. What I showed you that allowed me to very quickly hot swap my code and make some changes locally into the running application was one feature of a runtime that I'm using um, in Open Liberty, which is a development mode. I actually recorded some um, resources uh, here in the past, uh, some videos. Um, where you can check this out. But regardless of what technology you're using, it is just very important that you keep your local turnaround cycles um, short. So what I do here, I have my application that builds as a, well, war, as a thin uh, war um, deployment approach. And then I use Docker to run this as well locally, um, as well also in production. So all of that is always deployed as a a Docker image and here is my Docker file that I'm using. But now in order to build up these environments, for example, the test environments or the smog servers um, efficiently, I use Docker containers. And in my case, I actually wire them up very, very easily using scripts typically. So there's a lot of technology out there uh, that allows you to fire up some instances, for example, some containers. If you're using container technology locally, you can use Docker Compose. You can use some technology that integrates with tests. I will um, talk a little bit about that in the next video. But for me, it's actually just the easiest way to wire it up as, as easy as possible using bash scripts if you want. You know, because you can simply say Docker run, Docker run, and that's it. You can use Docker Compose if you want. You can even have some local Kubernetes cluster or depending how your target runtime looks like. But in general, you just want to have an environment that is very close to um, a later production environment locally for fast verification. So the point here is that you can build up an environment where you have very fast feedback without even going to the proper CI CD pipeline, which also is very important, which also needs to be defined. But if I only have um, a CI CD environment in order to verify my changes, what happens is that I have very slow turnaround cycles because I need to change some code, I need to push the code somewhere, maybe to a feature branch, I need to make sure that uh, this then will be built on my CNCI, um, CI CD um, uh, environment. And then I just, well, will probably disturb some colleagues as well if we have some failing builds, if I need to test something again and so on and so forth. So that turnaround cycle is just too slow. What I will do instead and what you've seen already is that I've built up some local environment where I can make these changes quickly. So thanks to um, some technology such as Open Liberty, these development modes or Quarkus, if you know about that technology, you can verify your changes on a production code quite easily. And then if you split these life cycle of your test environments from the tests, you can also fire up your system tests against these already running environments locally as well. Now, what to do in a bigger scale on your CI CD environment? Of course, the pipeline needs to run all of these um, tests and proper test scenario as well, and probably even more than that. So what you have, you typically have some test environment or some staging environment where you would deploy a similar example to this as well. And now I want to show you how to make your testing a little bit more efficient by reusing what we already defined here. So for example, if I have my um, development environment that uses uh, these Docker containers here, what I also define, because let's say I will use Kubernetes later on, I will have some Kubernetes YAML files, for example, for my coffee shop application that defines some um, services and deployments. This is now very specific to what Kubernetes does, but the point is what I can also do, I can build up um, an environment that for example is a system test environment here, where instead of the actual barista application, I run the very same wire mock that I ran locally. So what I did locally, I swapped out the container to use a different image. And here I can do pretty much the same. And what I have, assuming I use uh, Kubernetes as a target platform, I have a Kubernetes cluster running here, which actually runs um, on a managed Kubernetes service. I, uh, in this case, use the IBM Cloud IKS, where you can just fire up some Kubernetes instance. And the point is now, 
I can deploy this in this system test setting, either from locally or, of course, later on from my CI CD environment. And then I can run the very same tests against that environment as well. If you remember how I built up these components in my create order test, for example, for the coffee order, it is totally disconnected to the local test environment lifecycle. I don't set up any environment here. What I do, I connect to something that is already running. And I can, in this case, change this uh, configuration to use, for example, the actual um, system test environment, either from my CI CD environment or if I have um, a local environment here, I can say Maven package or Maven verify and then just set all of these um, configuration values to my actual Kubernetes cluster. And then I will create um, all of these instances there. And then I fire up my tests and now this uh, runs in a very similar way what I showed you locally, but now it actually runs against the actual test or staging environment. And then I can go and, um, to, for example, uh, query my actual cluster that is now uh, the cluster that is running and I see, oh, now these resources have been created there and this works in my case. So I have the actual coffee being created in my um, test environment. Now, the point is, if you make these, uh, if you build up these reusable components, you can make um, you can make use of this principle and then just, you know, connect them against uh, something else and you don't have to uh, build up your tests yet again. So since we create our tests in a very simple way and since we are not bound to a specific lifecycle, we can just fire up these tests now from a CI/CD environment and wire them against a different environment to verify this. If we would like to have a different test scope, we don't use a barista mock, but an actual barista system. So we uh, keep away the mocking in a different test if we like, then test this one as well. So then we have a proper end-to-end -end test scenario. Everything in code that we can also verify locally. And that is the point just to have basically best uh, both of uh, the best of both worlds of having a local development workflow and something that runs um, in an actual environment. And in this case, this is the connection what I would make. So to both have something that runs locally where we um, can quickly verify whatever we're doing while developing, but with a very fast feedback and with the actual verification that it works, right? Remember, it uses the same endpoints, it uses the same communication that you would use in a production system or in my CI CD pipeline, I run this against the actual proper environment, but I reuse the same tests so I don't have to uh, rewrite my test scenarios all over again. And by doing that, we can build up a very, very efficient development workflow.